our prayer, the time that we come and we spend before the Lord's throne, because we know that by the word of God, more things are wrong through prayer. It is by prayer that God hears and he answers our request. So tonight we are thankful that we can be here in the sanctuary to lift up the name of Jesus and to call upon his name because his name is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. We want to say tonight that God he is still real, he is still on his throne, he is still answering prayer, he is still moving on our behalf. And that is why we are here to shout from the rooftop tonight and let others know that Jesus Christ is still real. Maybe there are those that may be hopeless, may not know what to do or where to turn, but we are here to point you to the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless our heads and we ask God's blessing on tonight's proceedings. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, Lord, for this a brand new day that you have given unto us. Not only, Lord, a brand new day, but, Lord, you have afforded us the privilege to see a brand new month. For this, Lord, we thank you. For this, Lord, we praise you. For this, Lord, we lift up your name. For this, Lord, we give you honor because we recognize, Lord, that in ourselves we could not have done it. It is only through you and through you alone that we are in the land of the living. Father, we acknowledge that it is your breath in our lungs. And because of this, we are going to give you the praise and the honor, Lord, that is due to your matchless name. So even as we begin this service tonight, Lord, we are asking you that you will cover this place even now underneath your precious blood. Cover every member that is assembled here, Lord, those who are on their way coming. We pray, Father, that you will bring them safe in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, tonight that your Holy Spirit will have free course and free access in this place. And Father, for this, we give you all of the glory, all of the praise, and the thanks for what you're going to do on our behalf. Lift your hands and just give it thanks, just give it praise. Even those in your home and you join us, you just give the Lord the glory and thank you for his goodness and his mercy towards us. Praise the name of the Lord. You know the word of God tells us is of the goodness of the Lord, is of the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed. And so we thank God for his mercies that are new every day. Great is his faithfulness unto us. As we continue in our worship, we want to sing that song, Welcome Holy Spirit. You, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Come, live inside of me. Praise the name of the Lord.
the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And also we recognize that we cannot do anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. So we give honor to the Holy Spirit tonight as we bless and we glorify our God. And we thank Him even for the journey of mercies that He has given to us to be here tonight in this school of prayer and Bible study. We bless God for all that He has done throughout the course of the day, for how He has provided for His protection. We just give God praise and we give Him the honor. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. But we continue by singing that next song. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Spirit, move in this temple. Spirit, move in my life. Yes, pour your spirit in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus.
Spirit of God will move in this temple, will move in our life, will move in our nation. We are, are praying tonight that the Holy Spirit will have his free course and do the Father's will in the name of Jesus. Let's lift our hands and just give God thanks for the blessed Holy Spirit that he has given unto us. We read in the word of God and he said he will not leave us comfortless, but he will pray the Father that he will send another comforter. And we thank God that the comforter has come. The comforter is here. The comforter is present. The comforter is here to minister to our individual and collective needs. We just appreciate the presence of the Holy Spirit. And you know that Jesus told his disciples that where the twos and trees are gathered together in his name, there is he in the midst of them. And you know that is what makes the difference when the presence of God is in the midst. Because you can have a big crowd, amen, but you must know and make sure that Jesus is there. But I'm glad, amen, once we have persons of like mind, amen, and of one spirit, the matter is most is that Jesus' presence, amen, the Holy Spirit's presence is in our midst. And we give him thanks and we give him praise. And you know another um, scripture that comes back to my mind, that uh, despite all that is happening all over the globe, the prophecy that the Lord gave to Joel, his servant, that in the last days, yeah. amidst things are going to be happening. Huh? They talk about the perilous times, but then the promise of what God tells us, he said, in the last days. Yeah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. He said he's going to pour out, yeah. hallelujah, his spirit yeah. upon all flesh, all those who would make themselves available. Yeah. You know, the devil, as I often hear our old um, for parents will tell us, the devil have his job to do. But God has his also, amen, to do, amen. And one of God's functions, amen, is to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Somebody give the Lord praise and give him glory. But his Holy Spirit, he is still at work in the lives of men. And he is still drawing men and women. He is still convicting of righteousness, of sin, and of judgment. Drawing men and women uh, unto God, amen, bringing them to that place of salvation. So even as the word is in karma, amen, we know that there's a great harvest that is being read by the Spirit of the living God. We need to appreciate God for that tonight. That you know there's still hope. Because the Spirit is still here and He is still working. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me welcome again those of you who are in the sanctuary and those of you who are in your homes listening to us via this Facebook live stream. We welcome you tonight in our school of prayer and Bible study. Praise the name of the Lord. You may have your seat. At this time, we're holding for our season of prayer. Amen. And we want you to reach out where you are, reach out even in your homes. And the first segment of our prayer, I'm going to ask our prophetess Beverly to come and just um, be led as the Holy Spirit will lead her. Amen. To prayer. After that, we're going to ask our pastor character also to come and to intercede. Because we need to pray. Amen. amen. We need to continue to be the watchmen upon the walls. Amen. Making up the hedge. And pleading the blood of Jesus as we go through. Over to our prophetess. God bless her. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, O oh God. We honor you and we bless your yes, holy name. Yes. You are God and you reign in all power and majesty. We bless your holy name because you are great and greatly to be praised. We give you thanks, O oh God, for this privilege whereby we can come and offer prayer to you, O oh God. You said to come boldly to your throne, whereby, O oh God, we may offer a prayer to you, Father. And even now we come boldly, we come without fear. Father God, we come, Father God, to receive of your hand. We are asking you even now that your blood would even now wash us and cleanse us even purify our hearts, make us acceptable even in your presence right now. Father God, we lift this church before you. We are asking you, Father, that you would strengthen every believer. Strengthen those, oh Father God, that are going on with you. We pray, Father, that you will cause us as assembly, Lord, to go deeper in you, Lord, to 
we reach that place of maturity that you would have us to be. We pray for backsliders in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will cause their hearts uh, to return to you. Remember the calling heart. Uh, those, oh God, that are discouraged. We pray, Father, you will minister to them. Even those that will be stumbled over this broadcast tonight. We pray, Father, that you will strengthen. You will strengthen them. Lift up their feeble hands, oh God, and strengthen them in their inner man. Father, those that need healing, Father, that you would administer your healing, that you would touch, oh God, even Father, those, oh Father, that may be having a touch of the COVID, we pray that you would touch, let your blood reach out to them right now, touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, we rebuke the works of the enemy, we bind every strategy of the enemy in the atmosphere, all that he was saying to compromise the health of your people. We take the authority and we stand in the gap and we say the blood of Jesus Christ prevails in the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. We let this island Barbados before you. Lord, you see everything that is happening because your eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth, beholding the good and the evil. Father, I pray right now that you, O oh Father, would even let your blood prevail. Every territorial spirit that is over Barbados, we apply the rich blood. We apply the blood of Jesus from St. Lucie to Christ Church. Let your rich blood prevail. There seem to be an increase and a rise in the cases, but we will not fear. And we pray, O oh God, even now, that your hand, O oh God, will reach out over this land one more time, that you will have mercy, extend your hand of mercy, forgive the ignorance of God, forgive us, oh Father, as the people of this land, and we are praying that you will be merciful, and you will help us in this land, Lord, even to get the numbers of in control, in the name of Jesus, so we plead your blood, we plead your blood, even on those that are home isolating. God, I pray that you will breathe, oh Father. Send a fresh touch. Breathe upon us, oh God. Breathe upon us in this land. Touch the lungs, oh God. Breathe a freshness in the lungs, oh Lord, that will seem to be congested. Oh Father, I pray you will breathe a fresh causing your breath, oh Father, to even remove, oh Father, any COVID virus in these lungs. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your blood prevail over homes. Let your blood prevail over families. Let your blood prevail. You said when you see the blood, you will pass over. Pass over by your blood. Let your blood be the remedy, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh God, even as citizens, Lord, that we will look up to you, that we will turn our eyes upon you. Even as the children of Israel, you told them, when they look upon the brazen serpent, that they, O oh God, will be healed and they will live. I pray in the name of Jesus that some heart will turn to you, that they will look to you in the name of Jesus. So we cover this island underneath your blood. We take the authority right now of every principality, of every power, every work of darkness. Lord, you have exalted your son Jesus and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess in the heaven and the earth. Jesus Christ he is greater than every principality. He is greater than every power, every work of darkness. He is above all tonight. He is above angels. He is above all. So we lift up the name of Jesus over this land. We lift up the banner of Jesus Christ to fly over this land. We lift up and we raise up even the banner of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. 
We apply the blood of Jesus right now. And we declare that your will, it takes preeminence over Barbados. Your will takes preeminence above the will of any man, above the will of any human being. So Father God, be exalted in this land. We declare that man will not come above you in this island, but we declare that you, the true and the living God will be glorified. So we declare that our business belongs to you. We declare that our business belongs to you. We declare that we will walk after your principles. We declare we will walk after your precepts. We declare that no other God will be exalted in this island but you, the true and the living God. So we declare that all other gods become secondary and
send forth these prayers right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh Lord, I'll be the part of head, Lord, in this ministry before the Lord. As we enter, Lord, in the month of February, we start our various ministry, Lord. I bring the various ministry before the Lord, you know, the various ministry, the education, Lord, the youth, Lord, you know, the assessors, Lord, the music ministry, the various uh, choral, chorals, Lord, and the, and the various music ministries, Lord. And we bring them before you, Lord, the ushers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we have next to all the various in the Bible for church plan. And all the various things we bring before you, Father, Lord, we pray, oh Lord, to minister to our hearts, oh Lord, Lord. Give us willing hearts uh, in the name of Jesus. We restore us from our place of slumber. Those that slumber, Lord, those, oh Lord, that, Lord, that ease, Lord, we pray to stir us, Holy Spirit, Lord, let the fire up on us, Lord. Oh, stir us at another time when you step forward, Lord, to carry this gospel forward in the name of Jesus. We say we have your church and the gates of hell shall not be rated against you, Lord. We call us forth to be servants and be obedient to your word, obedient to your good, Lord. Obedient to your cause, Lord. So call us, Lord, to step forward. You know, with confidence to step forward with faith, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Pray that faithful, Lord, will arise in our hearts. And we don't be scattered, Lord. Let's not be concerned, Lord, about the parts. Let's not be concerned about the things that are hanging. But let's go forward trusting you. You want us to call us, Lord, to go forward and carry forward the various ministries of this assembly, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that your cause for the message will go forth. Uh, that souls will only minister to the Lord. That souls will be edified, Lord. And backstage. Lord, we call back uh, uh, to your word, Lord, uh, oh, to the Holy Spirit, uh, minister to the life of the word goes forth. Uh, we are stir us again, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the fire, Lord. I pray, Lord, for that revival fire, Lord, to burn. Uh, even uh, Jeremiah said, we let fire shut in his bones, the very fire in us, Lord. Uh, carry forth with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to minister, Lord, in your kingdom, in the kingdom business. And minister, Lord, in the kingdom work, Lord Jesus. Uh, so minister to us, Father, Lord, as only you can, Lord. Stir us as only you can, Father, Lord. And go forward a brand new year, the new year, Lord. Okay, your gospel message, Lord. Oh, yes, the other souls, Lord, that you are still saving. You are still delivering, Lord. You are still healing, Lord. You are still equipping, Father, Lord. In the name of you, still, Lord God, sanctifying, Lord. You are still justifying, Lord. You are still bringing us into union with Christ, Lord. In the name of you, still adopting, Lord. In the name of Jesus, so call forth those, Lord, that call forth the minister, Lord, even in the Sunday school, even in the Christian education. We call forth those that we call to minister the youth, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray the light of fire, Lord, and uh, let them burn in their hearts, Lord. Let them that desire, Lord, stir them again, Lord. For in the name of Jesus, uh, we ask for even the men that are in this ministry. We pray to stir us, Father, and go forward, Lord. Whatever side we come forth, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, with an excitement, Lord, with an excitement and desire, Lord, oh, with the Holy Spirit uh, propelling us forward, uh, oh, with an anointing upon our lives, uh, in the name of you, breathe upon us right now, Lord, breathe upon us, Holy Spirit, oh, breathe upon us again, Lord, let us be stirred in our souls, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, let us be stirred in our hearts, uh, in the name of you, pick us again, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, and those things that see you, Lord, uh, Oh, the sea, my Lord, uh, don't go too hard. Uh, I pray pour water upon us, Lord. Oh, pour water on those, Lord, uh, that are church, those that uh, those dry areas of our lives. Uh, I pray to be watered by the water of the Holy Spirit. Uh, oh, those dry, dry areas of our lives, Lord. Be watered, Lord, in the name of Jesus, come alive. Uh, uh, the freshness, Lord, and the enthusiasm, Father, Lord, as we carry forward uh, this ministry in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we work with our apostles. We work, work with our first lady, with our prophets, lovely Lord. We work with all the leaders of the church. We hold up their hands uh, in the name of Jesus uh, as we go forward Lord, to spread this gospel message uh, in the name of Jesus. So quicken us, Father, yes. by your power, by your might, uh, yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, yes. Father, even now we pray all for this in the of this assembly. Yes. All around this facility, Lord, we pray. Yes. We pray for our building, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray, Lord, uh, on the body doors uh, and the windows, Lord, uh, all around the borders of this assembly, Lord. We pray, oh, Lord, uh, uh, pray your blood uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we come, 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 come,
blood of God come forth to do damage. Uh, we come against them through the blood of Jesus. Uh, say that your, your, your imps will not uh, prevail. Uh, you will not uh, succeed. Uh, we come to rock uh, and subdue what we plan of the enemy. And we push back against the works of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Those who want to come uh, to defend this property, Lord. We come against them through the blood. Uh, we pray to turn around, Lord. We pray to turn around, Father, Lord. Uh, we pray to turn around, Lord. Oh, for first time they blocked in their way. We block them right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We block them off. Uh, in the name of God of Zion around this place. In the name of Jesus, Brother Zion. About this work, about this cause, about this great grounds. And this cause is great building, Lord. And you provide the Lord for prayer, for ministry. Oh, yes, Lord, we come against that. Uh, every work that the enemy will try to strategize, we come against him. In the name of Jesus, uh, I pray, Lord, uh, over the hands. Uh, we pray for the feet. Uh, we pray, oh, Lord, that you will uh, arrest them right now. They are arrest them, Lord. Those who have planned mischief, Lord, we pray that their minds will return uh, in the name of towards you. Oh, we break, Lord, uh, this stronghold. Uh, we break, Lord, with the spirit. Uh, every devious spirit of the life of spirit. We break them right now in the name of Jesus. We subdue them right now. We are strong right now, Lord. Uh, to the blood of Jesus. Uh, Oh yes, Lord, turn them around, Lord. Let them turn them around, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we come to wrap, Lord. Even Lord, through this area, Lord, through the gaps of Russia, parts of the gap of gas, in the road, uh, come back to the road. Lord, around the yes. surrounding presents and the queue, Lord, and the fear of fear. Go out to the Lord. We pray, Lord, oh, for the people in this area, Lord. We pray for the households. Uh, we pray, Lord, for the family members uh, and for the children in this area, the young people. We pray for them, Lord. Uh, oh, that we will pray. Bring a stern in their souls. Uh, bring a desire, Lord, in their lives, Lord, for something better, for something greater, Lord, for a better outlook in life. Uh, and those that do not know you, Lord, bring them that saving grace, saving knowledge, uh, bring them a place of surrender, Lord, give them a let it go, Lord, for we've ministered through this area, Lord, all around this area, we've carried the gospel, we've carried the word, Lord, and the word. Holy Spirit will stir them. Holy Spirit will make them uncomfortable. Holy Spirit make them uncomfortable. Make them best, their best too short. In the name of them, they cannot rest properly until they are recognized that Jesus Christ is Lord. And Jesus Christ has come to seek and to save those that are lost. We have to recognize their sin, Lord. And they will give them a let go so you can have free course in their life. We are turning around in this vicinity, Lord. In the name of the young men, Lord, that grow up in the streets. Oh, doing mischief to the young men that grow up in the streets. Drifting with nothing to do, Lord. Still in place, I work for idle hands to do, Lord. We pray to a stir them, Lord. And they bring them to a consciousness of life. A consciousness that Jesus Christ uh, makes the difference in our lives. Uh, that He's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, and no man comes unto the Father but by Him, Lord. Uh, the day of salvation uh, at the recognized Lord. At time, clock is striking the hour. And time is running up, Lord. Pray for too long, too late for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. So do a work in this area. Yes. Do a work in this facility, yes. Lord. Stir hearts in this yes. facility, Lord. Stir families, Lord. Oh, men back relationships, sir. Yes. Oh, yes. Minister the marriages, Father, Lord. That seem to be revealing, Father, Lord. Oh, the love seem to be revealing and, and desire seem to be going low. We pray a stir in every area and every facet of the people in this area, Lord. Do the other work we pray, Lord. You'll give them some employment. To find something for them to do, Lord. Direct them up their path. Lord. In the name of give them good direction, Father, Lord. Give them favor as the knock on doors. As they write, Lord, those, those letters, Lord. Oh, we pray, Lord, you move by your power and by your might. In the mighty name of Jesus, take us through with might and power. Continue to minister to us Lord, as only you can. We give you all the praise. All the thanks and all the honor and glory that is going to your master's name. We do praise. Amen. 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 Give your hands and give him praise in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. We give him praise. We give him thanks. We magnify his name. For our God is good. And his mercy enjoy forever unto all generations. I want to say that someone must stand in the gap. And someone must make up the hedge. Amen. The word reminds us that one man slept, the enemy crept in. So we cannot afford to give any room or any space for the adversary. We have to be always as watchmen. Amen. On the walls. 
praying and interceding that the will of God be accomplished. Right. Amen. Right. Men of prayer, women of prayer, amen. And even boys and girls, amen, can pray right. in the name of Jesus. So we continue to make up the hedge, amen. Right. Praying for families, praying for the nation, praying for communities that God will bring about a change in the hearts of men. And we know he will do it. Right. He promised that he will do it. His Holy Spirit will cover the face of the earth as he waters. So somebody give the Lord praise and glory. Right. You know when you look into God's word, there is hope. Right. There is hope in God's word. Amen. He said he's going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. He said his spirit is going to cover the earth as he waters cover the sea. Now uh, we give God thanks that he is at work. Praise the name of the Lord. And he's going to continue to work for us on our behalf and bring us through. Even as we move forward by faith. Amen. That is what we are doing. We are not looking at the situations. We are not looking at our circumstances. But we are stepping out. Walking on water. Amen. Walking by faith. And when you do it, amen, by faith, God makes a way, right. amen, where there is no way. Have faith in God and go forward in the name of Jesus. We give him thanks and we give him praise and we give him honor and we give him glory for all that he is doing, amen, in the earth, amen. Not only on our behalf, but he is doing great things in the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. We are going to go into the word of God tonight for a short word. Amen. We're going to continue on the topic that we were studying spiritual maturity as we were looking in the second epistle of Peter chapter 1. What we hear a couple of Sundays, we are on that topic. That is the topic that we are uh, leaning from as the Holy Spirit continues to minister to us because as we said, God wants us to grow up in Him. He wants us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when you read through the Word of God, whether it's in Colossians, whether it's in Ephesians, there's one main um, objective there that God's people, amen, come in the likeness Amen. Of Jesus Christ. That is the main objective. Yeah. That they will grow in the knowledge of Him. That they will be rooted. They will be strengthened. They will be built up in Him. That is what it's all about. Amen. Yeah. The other things, the other paraphernalia and everything that we were trying to put on and attach uh, doesn't matter. What really matters is that the people of God, having received that salvation that comes through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, continue. Amen. As we have received that salvation, continue to walk in him and to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That we come into that place to be able to comprehend with all the saints. Amen. What is the length? What is the breadth? What is the height? Because he wants us to he wants us to understand the mystery of his will. Praise him. And how are we going to understand that is by the renewing of our minds. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Amen. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is our what? Reasonable service, and be not conformed to this word, is a world system, amen? Yeah. And there's also a kingdom, praise God, and God wants his believers not to be conformed, but to be what? Transformed, and how is that transformation done? How does it take place? But you're renewing of our mind. Each time we go into the word of God, we look in the mirror of God's word, and we get an understanding of what he wants us to be. We have to allow our minds to be renewed. Amen. Amen. Not to be conformed to this word, but be renewed in the word of God. And that is how we become more like Jesus, more of his character, more of his image, his expressed image stamped upon our hearts. Amen. Our lives have been changed from glory to glory. We go from one level to another. As believers, we do not remain stagnant. But we grow in grace. We grow in the things of God. Amen. That's what our aim and our objective is. Not to be merely saved. Not just to enter at the door. Amen. But to come right in. And to see what the Lord has prepared for us. And to be all that he has. Amen. For us. Amen. A purpose for us in this life. Amen. Because we are here for a purpose. 
Amen. We are here to fulfill a part of each of us individually. Amen. And even as the song said, as we saw some Sundays ago, that we have to let our light shine. Amen. Amen. Shine our light out. Amen. And the word of God says that when our light shine out, men will see. Amen. All good works. Amen. Because the light is of no sense if it is put on a bushel. No one can see it, but it must be put upon the rooftop, amen, right. that others can see, amen, and come to know this light. And he said, we are the lights of the world, amen. Right. He said, we are the lights of the world. And so, as we grow in him, he expects us then to, to show that spiritual maturity, amen, that men may know truly that we are his disciples. We don't want to be fake. We don't want to be fake. We want to be true. We want to be genuine in our Christian walk. And it's becoming, many of us are at various levels, amen, but we can move on from there. We can graduate in the things of God. So as we look at the Word of God, while we were looking at 2 Peter chapter 1, we, we recognize that he was speaking to the saints that were scattered abroad. They were going through much persecution, just as we are going through tough times at this time. But a Miss the tough times that you are going through, you must maintain hmm? your salvation. Amen. You don't allow the tough times to change you. Amen. But you allow God to change you in the tough situations. Praise the name of the Lord. Let His light shine forth more and more out of you. Amen. Don't allow the trials to cause you to go back on Him, but press your way forward. Amen. Strive, as the Word of God says, to do what? Enter in, for we must enter in through much tribulation. And we see even the tribulations of that God allows, it is for our good. Amen. Because when we are at ease, we get comfortable, we grow slack, we grow our concerns, some of us backslide and all of that. But when the heat is on, when the pressure is turned up, it's where we get sharp. We, we have to get on our knees, we have to get into God, we have to pray more. I like it this way, praise the name of the Lord. Somebody give him praise and give him thanks. I thank him for the trials, I thank him for the setbacks, I thank him for the disappointments, I thank him for the things that he allows in our lives because they let patience have his perfect work upon us. So we must have that endurance that perseverance, amen, so that when all is said and done, we will be lacking nothing. We will be entire. We will be that people, amen, that God would have us to be. And so, as we were in this study, we recognize that, that God has given us the ability to become. God has given us the ability to become His children, amen, and that is not done of our own selves, but it is done because of the power of God that is at work in us. We have received that divine power that enables you and me, amen, that has given to us all things that pertain to life and also to godliness. So we can do it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, amen. God, amen, will equip us, and he has equipped us to live this Christian life. He has not saved us to struggle through, but he has given to us his Holy Spirit and the power that goes along, amen, so to enable us to live the Christian life. And we have become partakers of the DNA of God. We are partakers of that um, nature, that divine nature, and so as a result of that, we have become heirs, we have become joint heirs. And one of the things that I would have said in the study as we go through, that God calls us, amen, to be diligent. Diligent in the things of Him. Amen. We are to give all diligence. That means that as children of God, we are going to be uh, persistent. We are going to make effort. We are going to be very careful. We are going to be diligent persons. Those who are serious students of the Word. Amen. We are not going to be negligent or we are not going to be lazy. But we are going to dig deep into the things of God and get to find out the will of God for our lives. And Peter, as he was speaking to those saints that were scattered abroad, we recognize that he told them a very important thing. That is to add to your faith. Add to your faith. And there were seven things written in 2 Peter that he told them to add to their faith. Amen? So we are not to be stagnant. We are to add to our faith daily. Praise the name of the Lord. And those things that he said to add to our faith, number one is virtue. Number two 
is knowledge. Number three is temperance. And then we have patience and also godliness. We have brotherly kindness. And he also speaks of adding charity. There's a reason why he told them to do this because he said, and the key is here, do not forget this key verse, which is in verse 8. He says, for if we do these things, amen, it will be in you and a bone, they will make you, amen, that you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in what? The knowledge of our Lord and, and Savior Jesus Christ. And so just now I told you that the whole aim, the objective is to become like Christ. And so as he has given us the fruit of the Spirit, we also have to add to our faith these seven things that I point out to us in the Word of God. And if we do that, amen, as we work out our salvation in fear and in trembling, the Word tells us, Peter tells the saints that are scattered that they will not be barren. And we don't want to be barren because we went through concerning the barren fig tree. When Jesus came there, or the owner, as it says in the scriptures, came there and he was looking for fruit, and he found none. And he was going to cut down the tree. But there we see that the, the owner there says, well, give it some, another chance. Give it some more time. Another, uh, because of over time, we did not see anything being produced from that tree. But he says he's going to dumb around it. And he's going to, you know, do what is best and see if it will bring forth. And that is what God is looking for from our lives. He doesn't want us to be barren. He doesn't want us to be unfruitful. That's going on as believers are merely saved saved by the grace of God, but our lives must reflect, amen, what is in us, who is in us. Our lives must reflect who is in us, so we become more and more, amen, into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as we go back, amen, and we look at virtue, what is it? What is virtue? We say that virtue is showing high moral standards, and as a Christian, amen, God saves us, yes, but we must have a high value system of ourselves, amen. God values us, he loves us, he has chosen us, and so we must value ourselves. We must see ourselves as God sees us. We are a royal priesthood, we are a holy nation, we are a peculiar people, we are set apart, we are sanctified for God's use. We are not just mere people, amen? We are being washed by the blood of Jesus. He has called us out of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, amen? We are God's chosen, amen? And so we have to think of ourselves like that. We have to hold our heads up. We may have come from a past, praise the name of the Lord. We may have done things that were wrong, but now we have been washed in the blood of Jesus. We have been purified, amen? And he wants us to understand this. And from here onward, we are going to walk Amen. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to live up that life as He enables us to do it. So, as believers, then we cannot live loose lives. We must be people of high standards. Amen. Amen. As you know, when we look at the church in Corinth, there the Apostle Paul had to upbraid them at times for the kind of loose, loose lifestyles that they were living. He had to upbraid them because you know they didn't they did mourn, they were not sad about what they're doing. And so we have to recognize that we are the temple of God. Amen. We are God's temple, and we are not to treat our temple anyhow. We must be people of high moral standards. When we look in the scriptures, we see in Philippians 4 verse 8 telling us that we are to take up on those things that are true, the things that are honorable, the things that are just, the things that are pure, and the things that are lovely. What God wants us to do is to be obedient to his word, amen. And once we are obedient to the word of God, that word will take root into our hearts. You know, the word says, let the word of God do what? Dwell in us richly. And it's the word that brings about that change 
in our lives, amen, is a word that brings about that transformation in our lives. So some of us can testify the type of people we used to be. Some were drunkards, some were, you know, um, were mongers, some were the worst of the worst. But when Jesus Christ came into our, he changed our nature. The old things, amen, are passed away. The old all things now become new because the nature of Jesus Christ is in us and we begin to think different. We have a new outlook, a new perspective on life and, you know, there's now a new desire also within our hearts that we want to do the things that will please God. Amen? And so we have to, even as Ephesians 4, verses 2 tell us that we have to have that humility, that gentleness and that love. And also coming out in Proverbs chapter 10, verses 9, it tells us about living a life of integrity. We must be people of our word. Our morning words and our evening words must add up. Amen? So we, we, we have to be people of our word. We have to also be people who follow after righteousness. The word tells us that we are to seek First, the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. Amen. Amen. We Amen. get to understand what pleases God, what displeases God. Amen. And we take hold of his righteousness and we live righteous lives. Also in 1 Peter 2, verses 9 talks about that excellent spirit that we are supposed to. To have. So this is speaking of that number one thing that the Apostle Peter spoke to the uh, believers about virtue. We must be people of virtue. We must be people according to Colossians 3 verse 12, people that have compassion. Amen. So here we see as we go through the word of God, our nature, our nature, whether we were persons who are angry and we weren't concerned about others, then we see the Holy Spirit working in our lives, putting the love of God, the word of God said the love of God is shed abroad by the Holy Spirit. How I just give God thanks for the change. Hallelujah, that takes place in our lives. Okay. Amen. When we were angry and we would, you know, we didn't care about anyone. We see the Lord changing our nature and He put in that compassion. He, he, he teaches us to be kind and tender hearted and to have a mixed spirit. These things don't happen overnight. But as we get into God's Word, as we heal ourselves, and as we add, remember the Word of God said we must add. Amen. And as we work the Word, Amen, the Word will work for us. So, I give God praise and give him thanks. I give us the example of Timothy when we see how he was raised by his uh, um, grandparents and his spirit, amen. His mother and his, uh, his uh, parents, praise the name of the Lord, we see because of the, 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 the virtue that was within him, he had good character, amen. There's so much that his character was spread abroad, not only where he lived, but also as far as Iconium, according to Acts chapter 16, verses 2. And so, I give you that example to show us, amen, that we cannot be just merely Christians, we have to be believers of virtue. Men and women of virtue. And then he goes on and he speaks also about temperance. That temperance there speaks of self-control. Emotional restraint. We have to do things in moderation. The scripture says that we have to let our moderation be known unto what? All men. So we have to be temperate, temperate in our thoughts. Temperate in our word and temperate in our action. And we see that those who practice temperance, they show restraint. When you are a person who practices temperance, you show that restraint in your passions and also in your behaviors. Amen? So as you are temperate in your behaviors, amen, that is what God also wants for us as his believers, to have that spirit of self-control. The enemy will come and he will tempt us and want us to do certain things, but because that uh, temperance is in us, it restrains us, amen? You mean we can, we can give up to the flesh and we can do whatever we feel? We can, we can, but because the spirit of God is living in us, amen, that temperance, amen, restrains us. Accept the grace of God, amen. Outside of the grace of God, we, we, we will be mere sinners. Do you know that? Yeah. And we will, we will go back to the begging elements. 
But we have been changed, you know. We have been changed, amen. And so he wants us to add now to our faith that we not, are not loose people, amen. Loose in our actions, loose in our thoughts. We do any and anything, you know. The word says that all things are lawful, but not everything is expedient, amen. There's, there's a pattern of behavior, amen. A way of how we uh, are supposed to operate as children. And this, this all comes through teaching, teaching the word of God. Because as a believer comes in, he may not have the knowledge of what this Christian life is all about. But teaching the word of God, amen, causes that believer to come to that place of there is a way, amen, that I should behave. There is a way that I should live as the word of God comes through, amen. And he learns, amen, the way of the kingdom. Somebody give the Lord praise and glory so that he can restrain himself. No, this is not the way that a child of God should live. God expects better of me, praise the name of the Lord. And so God expects us to have that self-control. Amen? When we look at the word of God in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 2, even where our body are concerned, our sexual passions hmm, are concerned, God speaks to those things. We see the Apostle Paul saying, but I keep my body. Hmm? You have to speak to yourself, you know. If not, you can just be any and any body at all. You can just live as you like. But understand that you're a child of God. And as the Apostle Paul said, I keep my body. I bring it what? Into what? Subjection. I bring this body of mine. Because you know that the, the, the body has desires. It has uh, passions. Hmm? The worldly lust that God has caused us to escape. The grace of God have, have, have taught us, amen, to deny worldly lust and all this our God that we should live out soberly before the presence of God. So we've got to understand now that this body that we have and God has given to us, we are not our own. We belong to God. We are the temple of God. So we even have to speak to these bodies when the passions and the car, the passions rise up. We call it the old man and his nature rises up. We have to learn to bring what? Our bodies in subjection. He says, let's by any means, when I have preached to others, hmm? I myself should be a castaway. We don't want to be a castaway. Hmm? Say we are saved and we are dead and we are living the life of the ungodly. We want to have temperance. We want to add that to our faith. Titus 2.12 For the grace of God that brings salvation, that verse that I was just quoting to you, have appeared to all men. And what does it teach us? It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Worldly lust. The word of God tells us that there are three things that are in the world. There's the lust of the eyes, there's the lust of the flesh, and there's the pride of life. These three things which are there to try to bring enmity or to fight against us. Hmm? But the grace of God has taught us, this is what we are learning, that we are to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. I know there's a way we should live. We should live soberly. Not as a drunken person. A drunken person stumbles all across the road. Hmm? A drunken person will, 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 will lay down anyway, will do anything at all that comes by. They, they are being controlled. The, the, the substance has them influence. They will do anything. But we are not to be a drunken person because we are, we are not of those, as the word tells us, of the night. We are those of the day. And we are supposed to be sober-minded. Amen? Sober-minded. Even in our conversations, we are supposed to be sober. Amen? Tempered in our very conversations. He says to live soberly and also righteously. And how are we to live? Godly. So he has called us as we are growing on in spiritual maturity to live. Let me go back over those again. Soberly, you can make note, those of you in your homes, as I said, your, your, your brain doesn't remember everything. That is why then, if you want to become Christ-like, make notes, amen, jot down these things that you can go over them. Even when we are finished here tonight, and you will look back and see what God requires of us. We are supposed to live righteously and godly walk, walk in this 
present world. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. That is what Jesus says. Say, Father, I pray for them. Don't take them out of the world, but you keep them in the world. And the reason why he wants to keep us in the world so that we can be examples. You know, as the word tells us in Timothy, example of what? The believer, a word, eh? a charity, a spirit. We have to be example. But somebody is looking on so for an example. Somebody is looking for the way. And if we are not showing them the way, how can they see the way? Amen. We are, we are the lights here. We are God's representatives within the earth. So God wants us to live soberly, righteously, and godly. That must be a part of our character in this present world. There's a word, word in Proverbs chapter 25, verses 16, that says, Has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. We are the topic of temperance. The second thing that we are supposed to add to our faith. And Proverbs is saying here, honey is a good thing. It's a very sweet substance. And just because it is sweet, it doesn't give us the license that we will take it and eat it and eat it and consume it. It's very rich. It can give you a spike, you know that? In your sugar levels. Because of the richness in it. Somebody might say, well, it is sunny, so I'm going to put in two spoons for a bite tea or whatever. When you hear the shop, your, your sugar level is, 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 has risen. Because even though it's something that is good, you're supposed to do it in moderation. Eat so much as what well, it is sufficient. You only um, use what you need. What is sufficient, just because it's good, you know, you're, you're going to devour it and you're going to use it up. That goes also for our eating as Christians. Because of this taste, because of this good, you eat up and eat up, you can't eat up anymore. Huh? We are supposed to be temperate in our uh, behaviors and everything. We, we, we eat and eat till we are overlaid and then our, our stomach is too full and you know that is a sin. When you overeat, the word says it is a sin. So eat as much as sufficient for our thee, lest you be filled. You got so much inside the honey is something good, and you use it and use it, and then you have to vomit it up. Because the stomach can only hold so much. We talk about temperance. Even as Christians, those of us, amen, is not everything that we can partake of. It's everything that we can consume. Mm? Alcohol and these things when we see our friends at the parties and whatever we're drinking, just because we want to fit in, we, 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 we fire a drink. As people say, we just fire that with friends. And we want to fit in with the crowd. But we must let our love shine, even at the Christmas parties and even in our workplaces, amen. Observe that temperance, amen, that behavior, that becoming godliness, amen. Somebody give the Lord praise and teach it the word of God. And the word of God is what only thing that is going to change us. Amen. We must not because of it. It's good that we just use the we have to be moderate, amen, in what we do. The word of God even speaks in 1 Timothy 3 concerning this temperance, 2 to 3, even concerning those that will take leadership positions. It says that a bishop must be what? Blameless. Talking about temperance, he must be the husband of one wife. Somebody, are you here with me on the same page? Does it say two and three wives? Does it say to divorce three and four times? No, that is not the example. And we see, we see within the church, this is what is happening. There's no example. There is a way, there's a standard that God has set up in His Word that believers should live. The Word will do that. But we are not to copy the lifestyle of the Word. We are to be set apart. We are supposed to make the difference. We are supposed to be different in this world. Amen. It's just because the world is doing it doesn't mean we have to do it. Everybody is doing it. So we don't. No, we don't have to do it. The Bible says that it must be the husband of one wife. That's the standard. He must be someone who is vigilant. He must be one who is sober of good behavior. So he, he's, uh, as a bishop, called to set an example. Mm? He's not called to live with his members. Mm? He's not called to live as a homemonger. 
the people that God has given to him, he's not a lord over them and think that they belong to him. The people belong to God and he must treat them with respect. See them as brothers and sisters and a family of God. This is, this is what the word of God says, that they must be tender, they must be of good behavior, they must be given to hospitality, they must be apt to teach. All of these qualities, that's why people must return back to the Word of God and see what, what the requirements are because we are, we are seeing a church that has gone far from the Word of God. But the, the Word of God still is here. Amen? And we must come back to this. He says here, not given to wine. Huh? You know, so we say we're not given to much wine. But it says it's not given to wine. Uh, no striker. He must not be a person who beats his wife. Huh? He must not be a striker. He must not be greedy or filthy lucre. Huh? Money must not be a thing uh, to consume his heart. That must not be his focus. But he must be patient. He must not be someone who goes up in the street and have a brawl. Let all the people know his business, what is going on. Have a custom and all of these things. This is what the word of God says. And I am just giving you as it says. He must not be someone here with a spirit of covetousness take over his life. And he's not satisfied. He wants this. He wants more money. And you see within the church even today, some uh, bishops and leaders, uh, all they gravitate towards is money and more money and more prosperity for themselves and having no care for the people of God. You must be temperate. Have that temperance to what the word of God says. Add, add to your faith. Amen. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 21 to 23 tells us that we have to prove all things. Amen. Amen. Because so much things are thrown up there. It doesn't mean that everything is right. It doesn't mean that everything is good. It doesn't mean that you must, uh, as, you, as we were saying, the major parents jump on on the bandwagon. Everybody's jumping on, so we jump on to. We must prove all things to see if these things are well pleasing to God. Amen. To see if God accepts these things. And we are to hold fast. I'm talking about temperance. We are to hold fast to that which is good. Amen. The things which are good. We see now the word and, 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 and the church mixing and everybody's gravitating to everything. It's, it's, it's a, as, as someone says, a, a whole multicolor situation that is blending. You don't know who is uh, uh, the church from the world. But it should not be like that. There must be a marked difference. Amen. God is calling us as his people to walk spiritual maturity. Maturing in the things of God. He said that we must abstain from all appearances of evil. In all that is evil we must abstain. We have to ask God for the grace to do it because the, the enemy is out there. And if you don't come and want me, he's going to try another. Amen. He will be trying to live an upright life. But he, he comes up with various tactics and various schemes to try to see if he can get you in, to try to see if he can get you into his mold. But we must ask God for the grace. He gives us the grace to do it. Amen. If you are there, you're listening to me and say, well, all of this here for the Christian life, but well, I don't know if I can measure up to that. I want to say that you can. But asking God for the grace. This is not law. This is not something that you must uh, work for this effort. God gives us the ability to do it. Amen. His divine nature that is in us. This, he gives us that ability to become Christians, to become the children of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord praise and glory. Uh, I have not seen here, I have not heard, neither have it entered in the hearts of man. Amen. The things that God has prepared for us. Amen. We are, we are all becoming. Amen. What he will have us to be. Our eyes of our understanding as the word of God is being ministered are open to the things of God. Open to what God wants for us. And then the other thing that he mentions here is patience. As you come into the things of God, we must understand that one of the requirements here that we're supposed to add to our faith is patient. You know, everybody wants everything in a hurry. But as children of God, we have to learn to wait on God. Because we cannot do it in our own selves. Word tells us that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of God. And we must learn to wait on God. Amen? Let Him mold you. Let Him shape you. Let Him fashion you into what He will have you to be. Don't, as we were told when we were coming up in the things of God, don't, don't be in a hurry. Don't be hasty. Take time. 
to be holy. Amen. Take time out with God. Amen. And let him work on you. The word tells us that we are supposed to rejoice in hope. Romans 12 verses 12. We are supposed to be patient in tribulation. We are supposed to be continuing instant in prayer. Even the trials that will come our way, the things that we will go through. As children of God, we have to learn to be patient. You know that God is working in our lives? And sometimes we don't like to be in the fire. We don't like the hard tribulations. But God is at work in our lives. The Bible tells us in James 1 verses 4, we are supposed to let that patience have his perfect work in us that we will be walk perfect and entire when we have come through the fire we will be wanting nothing praise the name of the lord so we must add to our faith that patience that perseverance amen that is so needed even in these times that we are living in romans 8 25 says but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Amen. Do the things that God has promised to us as his children, the things that he has prepared for us, and we have hope that we will see it. And but also we must have the patience to learn to wait. Sometimes some persons go and see God do it right away, so they get tired, they get weary, and they, they, they move out. They say, Lord, I can't wait on you. It's something that God, um, they're praying to God about, and they don't see God do it in the timing that they are expected, so they get tired and they um, you know they go back on God. But God wants us to add, add to our faith and learn to be patient. Amen. Because God is a God that is patient, amen, with us. Philippians 4, verse 6 tells us that we are supposed to be careful for nothing. Don't get anxious. Hmm? Don't be in a hurry. But in everything, by prayer, how are we going to do it? And supplication, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Amen. Don't get anxious for nothing. Don't you know? Don't get in a hurry. You just place those needs, those things before the Lord, and the Lord Himself, He is going to work it out. And how does He work it out? He works it out according to His will. Just lift your hands where you are as you take in the impartation of God's word and you thank Him for the enlightenment that is coming to our hearts. You know, we might have heard these things, yes, time more time, but God comes and He refreshes us because He knows what we need. And so we give God thanks even for the entrance of His word that brings light, amen, uh, open up our understanding that we can be enlightened and so that we be able to get understanding, amen, because if we don't be enlightened, and if we don't get the understanding, then we will not be able to walk in wisdom. We will not be able to make the application. So we must get the knowledge of God's word first. Amen. Knowledge of God's words first, as Paul prayed with the Colossians, and also with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. So after we receive the knowledge, we're asking God then to give us the wisdom, how to walk it out. Amen. Help us to understand what He's saying so that we can walk it out. Because as I said, and you will hear me say it over and over, God has not just merely saved us. We are to come into the mystery of His will. Amen? We are to understand, as Scripture says, what the will of God is for us as believers. There's a will of God that He desires for us. There's a way of living that He desires for us. Certain behaviors and cultures of the kingdom that He desires for us. And it is in the Word of God. As we study God's Word, it is there for us to guide us in the right way, so that as we add to our faith, amen, we become stronger in the things of God. We become richer in the things of God, amen. We become built up, as the word of God said, in our most holy faith, amen, so that no one can come and move us away, amen. We will not be shallow Christians. Mm -hmm. That people can just come and bring traditions and different things before us and move us, move us away from what we know. Amen? So spiritual uh, Christians, Christians that grow in maturity, they know what the word says. They know their God. Amen? And they're able to stand as 
men and women for God in a little God. But that's what he wants for us because as I told you already, at the ending of the day, he wants to present us, amen, as that bride that is before spot, amen, before wrinkle, before blemish, before his father. He wants to do it, so he wants to grow. He wants us to grow up in him, having that virtue, having that temperance, uh, that's what the word of God is having that patience. And I want to close here tonight with the other one, and that is godliness. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and also for godliness. Amen? Once before, we can look at an individual even in their behavior to see that as a godly person. Because of their mannerism and the actions in their behavior. But as I said, the states are deteriorating. And remember, I'm reading within the Word of God, even as I was reading in 2 Thessalonians, the Word of God says that the time climaxes, many are going to depart from the faith. And there's going to be a great fall in the way, even before that man of perdition is revealed. Look, we are in the last days. But God wants to strengthen his remnant. So that they can hold fast in the profession of their faith. They will be able to stand. They will not be easily moved. They will not be a part. And I don't want to be a part of the ones who are falling away. Because of the pressures of life. Because of the persecution that is on. It is too hot for them so they fall away from the faith. We want to, we want to stand on the word of God. Amen. Embrace the, the word of God, amen, and let that word be lived out in us through the Holy Spirit, amen, that nature of God, amen, that at least, amen, there is a remnant, there is somebody, even though that things are deteriorating, there is somebody that somebody can still look upon and say, these persons have been with Jesus, amen, don't worry that things are deteriorating and people are falling away, let us stand. Amen? Uh, I was listening back to the, the, the words of that hymn. You know, we don't sing it now. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the day and age that we need to stand up for Jesus. Not a literary standing up. Amen? But a standing up in our living. Amen? Standing up. Because the strike will not be long. Amen? Right. The next show could be the victor's song. But we need to stand up, amen. Be strengthened in the things of God. That is why you see, as long as the Lord gave me the breath and gave me the strength, you know, I have been praying to the Lord, even in the midst of the difficulty of hope, what to do, amen. And even as we were discussing that, we were praying, oh, Lord, what we could do that others could get back home, amen, somebody. And, and you know, we, we made that step of faith to open these doors, amen. And if two or three come in, we can keep this place, amen, burning for Jesus, amen. That our God says, amen, can go out. Even in this community, and let others know God has not gone to sleep. He is still alive. Amen. amen. Somebody shouting it from the rooftop. Amen. amen. And anyway, a fair amen. Praise God. And those that do not know, hallelujah to Jesus, know that there's still a God who loves them, who cares for them. I want to see them live in the right way. So God gives us the strength. Amen. Hallelujah. He gives us the strength. We are going to do what? Go forward. We going forward. In the name of Jesus, you know, I was saying to myself that. You know, sometimes we, we talk a lot. Amen. We say, Lord, come walk me. Lord, amen. I will go for you. Amen. But when the heat is on, then you will see you feel that will go for him. Hmm? Amen. And this is a test of our faith. Amen. A test of our faith to say, see what we will do. Amen. And we can crumble or we can put our faith in God. Amen. And then we are going to keep struggling and going forward. But I intend by the grace of God to keep going forward. Amen. Because I know that he has called me for a purpose. But, but this, this is what he called me to do. And I can do it. Amen. You might be doing something else that you will be called for. But I know what he has called me for. Amen. To propagate his word. To propagate his gospel. Amen. Let others know that Jesus Christ is still alive and well. And that he can keep. Amen. If they give your life over to him. Amen. Right. He can cause you. Amen. To grow up in him. To add to your faith and become strong. Amen. Right. To let you be an example for him. Oh, somebody give God praise in the earth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We are not all rich. 
Amen. We have not reached to that place of perfection. But let the Apostle Paul and forgetting those things. Amen. Some of us have made our mistakes and we have falls and we learn from our blunders. But I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And I'm pressing my way. Pressing my way through to the mark of my soul. I call in the name of Jesus because I know that he has got a good work in me. Amen. He's working on me. He's working on you. He's going to perfect it. He's going to perfect it. As we get in and add to our faith, he's going to perfect it. And he's going to make us all that he deserves to be. So as we close the tonight, as we look at this godliness that we're supposed to add, amen, the word of God tells us in 2 Peter 3, verse 11, seeing then that all of these things shall be dissolved. What was he reminding the people about? Hmm? talks about the, the word that was dead when, when back in the days of Noah it was destroyed by a flood. Hmm? He talks about this, this word of this heaven as you see it in earth is going to melt with fervent heat. He says, it, 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 the word tells us that we are children out of the night that these things should overtake us and we will be surprised. Amen. But we know what the end of events would be. We know the things that will take place. And since we know that this is going to happen, this is going to take place, all of these things here, these temporal things, are going to be dissolved. It tells us here in the word of God, then, then, what kind of persons, what manner of persons are we to be hmm? to live carefree, to live slap, huh? to do like the, the cinema, to be no example. No, we should be persons, amen, in all holy conversation. That word conversation means my behavior should become uh, of that of godliness. My Christian behavior must stand out, amen. We, we, we are not perfect as I say, but God can help us to do it. How many of you believe that tonight? God can help us amen. to do it. Amen. Amen. To our conversation, as I said, in our homes, in our workplaces, uh, on the bus, wherever we are, uh, we, will be, we will be the same individuals and persons that our light can be shined forth wherever we are in our witness, in our witness for the Lord, in our holy conversation, and also in our godliness. Praise the name of the Lord. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6 tells us, but godliness, huh? what is, what, what godliness depicts the character of God. Huh? It's talking about the character of God that we should adapt. Huh? It's about godliness. Hmm? Godliness with contentment is great gain. Add to your faith, godliness. Hmm? The word of God, I think it is Psalm 1, tells us, Blessed is that man hmm, who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners. Huh? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, in which he does what? Meditate day and night. But it tells us something that the ungodly, they are not so. Yeah? Now, there's a difference between the godly and the ungodly. The ungodly is like the shaft. Huh? There, there, there's no, there's no anchor. There, there, there's no um, stair. There's no rudder there at all. Amen. The ungodly just let the shaft that the wind blows and goes here and there and, and live and do as, as, as they please. So that is not who God wants us to be. Amen. He wants us to have and to add that godly character to our lives and add contentment with it. Amen. Godliness. And be contented. Pastor Paul said, I've learned to be contented in all the state that I am. Whether he has or whether he, 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 um, he does not have, he has learned is something. And this, this, this faith that we're in is all a learning thing. It's learning, amen, to be contented, amen, and everything we can learn to give God thanks. Things are very hard now. Things are very difficult. Even for families, persons have been laid off and much, there's much distress. Um, are we going to give up our faith? And are we going to just throw up our hands and give up? No, man. No. We become stronger in the things of God, even in these kind of difficult times. I praise the name of the Lord, Lord. Whether the Lord bless us with little, we can still give God thanks. And when He bless us with a lot, because when we look back, the Lord has been doing so much, so much, so much, so much. But if this is a thing, turn now and a time for trying and give Him praise and give Him thanks, amen. Because there are seasons in our lives that we go through, there are seasons of plenty, hmm? there are seasons of, of little. 
as I see this here as a season of death, you will believe it or not. If you all want to believe it, it's up to you. It's like a season of reaping harvest in the earth where many people are dying one after the other. And, and, and there are seasons for this. Hmm? It will not be forever. Huh? There are seasons where things just happen. But we have to give God thanks every lesson. You know? We can't drop our hands. We have to give the Lord thanks and praise. The word says in 2 Corinthians 7, and as I, I am wrapping up here, Amen. 7 1, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. And if you are in the same scripture as me, it says from all filthiness. You know that when we do not know Jesus Christ, we filthy. But I tell you, sin is a terrible thing. Huh? It's so depraving. Things that you would do that you, you, you it, it, when, when God gives you a little understanding, your brother will set up questions as people who, you know, live certain way, but ask him, they did they such things. Hmm? Murdering, all kinds of things, debased things. But when God gives you an understanding, he causes you to, to think different. And so he says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. All that is in the word is filthiness. You'll see people doing all kind of kind of debased things and they will think that it is right. And they will take pleasure in doing these things. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But the word of God says, if we're going to grow on the spiritual maturity, we're adding to our faith, amen, godliness, and we're supposed to cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh, the lust, the hatred, the malice, the envy, the strife, the debate, huh? the variance, all of these works of the flesh, we could cleanse ourselves from all of those filthiness. And the word of God said, filthiness of the flesh and spirit. I said, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen? Let's ask the Lord to restore the fear of God in the earth. Because the word tells that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and when there is no fear for God then men do any and anything live anything but we want to have the fear of God in the church in our lives amen in our nation to restore so that men can live uh, perfecting that holiness you know back in the days it was a holiness movement huh? A lot of, a lot of, they used to be teaching on this holiness, and they had Mark all on the church, holiness unto the Lord. That was a, that was a, and those movements are necessary, amen, was ushering in that holiness movement to show the believers how are they, they to live holy unto the Lord, amen. And, they, and, and it's still needed for today, holiness in the fear of God. Somebody give God praise and give him thanks. And my final scripture tonight in this um, Bible study as we continue on this stuff is 1 Timothy 4, verses 7. 1 Timothy, and, and, and these are just a few scriptures that I have taken out. But I want you, when you get the chance, and you go through each of these on your own timing, Patience, virtue. Look up in the scripture. Look in the scriptures for all the other connected scriptures to these things that we must add. And you must read them and make them part of your devotion. You will see what God is saying through His Word to us. He says here, but refuse, refuse. You know, there's some things that we gotta refuse. It's not everything that we can accept. We see you now that the Word is there's a, there's a whole penetration. That is going on in the world. Penetration of ideas, ideologies, ideas, everything is being penetrated. Bringing in this whole thing of globalization all over the world. But it's not everything for us to accept. We have to refuse. The word of God says, refuse profane hmm, and always fables. Hmm? All these always fables and cliches and every oh my goodness when you look within the church and you hear the little things and all the words fables and different things and something else and they added all these things to the word huh? but God said refuse those things huh? and exercise yourself oh Jesus we give you praise and thanks exercise yourself huh? add to your faith hmm? yourself unto what? godliness godliness 
God wants us to get back to that level. Godliness, amen. You have not believe. You know, you know, people in Bangalore they take the faith serious. They take the Christianity serious. Don't let nobody at all eh, tell you that you're taking this thing too serious and you're cause for all of that. Amen. Amen. If you want to live the Christian life, you're about to do the things that God's word says. So I give God thanks and praise for those of us who have come in. Amen. Into, into this school of prayer. How we have prayed for the various needs. How we have reflected and we have looked at God's word there in the book of 2 Peter of the things that we need to add to our faith. And I want us to continue to, you know, get into the word even for yourself and see the way that God desires us to live as Christian lives. After you've been saved, move from the door. Come in. Amen. Get into the word. The Bible says to study the word. Amen. Study it. So that you become that work that needeth not to be ashamed. You'll be able to rub the divine, the word of truth. Become a student of the word. Amen. And build up on your faith. Not what Jew says, amidst all the heresies and the different things that were going on, said building up yourself. Building up yourself and you do that on a daily basis. Huh? As you call yourself in prayer, also in the word, you and take responsibility for yourself. Amen. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Let's make our hands even now. In the name of Father, we want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise, Lord, for this blessing and this privilege that we could have come, Lord, into your sanctuary tonight to sit under your word. Lord, we have left alone all the things that are behind us. We could have been home, Lord, but we have put aside the things that, uh, Lord, the circumstances and the various things. And Father, we give you thanks for this blessing, this this, this opportunity that you have given to us, Lord, that we can come and we can eat of your word, we can partake of your word and see, Lord, what you are saying to us. I pray, Father, that you will continue to strengthen us here. Here at the Lord of the Tabernacle, Lord, continue to build us up as your word says that we will be rooted and grounded and become strengthened and become settled and we become established in you. Father, God, I pray that you will strengthen our hands. Lord, I pray that there will be no quitting in us. Lord, even as the times get tough and, and more uncertainty grows, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will strengthen our hands. Lord, anchor us off. Help us, dear God, to know you. Come into that knowledge of who you are in the name of Jesus. And we will continue as your children to add to our faith that we can become, Lord, the people that you are looking for us to be in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, we give our lives over to you. Help us, even those in those areas where we are weak, we ask to bring strength. In those areas, Lord, where we are too strong, we are praying, Lord, that you will temper us. But, Lord, you make us, Lord, and you mold us into the image and into the likeness of your dear Son. In Jesus' precious name, and everyone say amen. We thank you very much, even those of us who are here, and those of you who are in your home, from the time that you have taken to join with us in our school of prayer and Bible study. The Lord richly bless you, as we now say, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock, we'll be here in the sanctuary for our midweek prayer and breakthrough service. You can make the effort to be here. Amen. To continue to be strengthened in your faith. Next week, God's paradise in the second Thursday. The second Thursday of the month, we're going to begin our family life ministry. And we just want you to, you know, involve, get yourself involved and continue to grow on in the things of God so you can become stable. So God bless you. Good night. Shalom.